Emergency podcast, Mark Cavendish is going to the Tour de France. All the speculation last week, he's not going to the Tour. Sam Bennett, he's good from his knee injury. He's going to go defend his green jersey. Change of course, breaking news. Bennett's knee is not better. And Mark Cavendish is officially riding in the Tour de France, looking to add to his 30 stage wins. It'll be 10 years since he won on the Champs-Élysées in the green jersey, Five years since his last stage win in the Tour de France back in 2016, but he's back. And honestly, this is one of the best things that's happened in cycling, regardless of the result. I went through it yesterday. I did the preview show talking about did Cav deserve to go to the Tour de France with his five wins this year and his renaissance year? A hundred percent. But with Bennett healthy, did it make sense to take Cav? The answer is no. You shouldn't have both those guys in the race. Uh, also speculated, look, if, if Bennett's injury is bad and he drops out of the race, the world is going to be in an uproar if Bennett drops out of the race and Cavendish is sitting at home on his thumbs. So very exciting stuff. Uh, quote just came out. Sam Bennett taking a moment to respond to what's going on. We didn't really know what happened with this whole injury thing. He said, and this is just from Cycling News, I had a very minor incident during training a couple weeks ago, which affected my knee. While the injury I sustained is very short term, it impacted my training for the biggest bike race in the world all too much and left me without enough time to be race fit. The tour deserves me at my best, and it would be due to my team and myself an injustice to race in my current condition. I wish the whole Wolf Pack a successful three weeks on the road of France. So uh, obviously Cavendish, his response, look, upset for Bennett. He deserves to be able to defend Green. It's a shame but I'm going to grab this thing with both hands. Now, a um, lot to break down here. Said, do he deserve to go? Yes, he's got five wins for those who haven't been keeping score. Now, were they World Tour wins? No, but if you look at the best sprinters in the world, the only other sprinters with more wins or even the same, Arno DeMar, Sam Bennett himself, Tim Merlier, and if you want to call them sprinters, Vander Poel and Wout Van Aert, all those people are going to be at the Tour um, along with Caleb Hughes. And, and Cavendish just the biggest win of the year against half of those guys, against Merlier, against Caleb Ewan. So, look, I fell on my sword. I said this wouldn't happen, but this is a great thing. And as I said, 10 years ago, 2011, Cav won in green on the Champs-Élysées. And he won't be there in green this year, but to see him have a shot is just so epic. I mean, this is just one of the most epic things we could ever imagine. Uh, a quick look at this guy's Palmares. Not that he needs any introduction. And then let's look at the stages where he's got the best shot to get his 31st stage win in the Tour de France. So the Manx missile from the Isle of Man, 30 stage win to the Tour de France. As I said, last one came five years ago in 2016. It has essentially been dry since then. He's now 36. I think he's going to get a sixth one by the time the sun sets on the Champs-Élysées in Paris on July 18th. Let's take a look at where he's got the best shot. And he will definitely have a shot because he's got a great train around him. He's got Ballerini and Morku. Morku, the best lead-out man in the game. Uh, and then they've also got Asgreen and Cantaneo from further out. That's going to be really helpful. There's a couple sprint stages where you've got long lead-ins to the finish. Um, not tech we've got a couple with technical turns. We'll look at them. And then a couple with long lead-outs. And those guys are going to come in clutch. Asgreen, Cantaneo, both have that trucking power, good at the TT. And then, look, this team's going to be willing to work to pull back breakaways on these sprint days if they get away, and they've got the tractor, Tim DeClerc, to do just that. And also, you better believe, Julian Alaphilippe will do some work here. He's not above it, and he'll be wanting Cavendish to get a win. I wouldn't be surprised to see him pulling in the final kilometers, even just to stay out of trouble um, and set up Cav for the win. So let's take a look at the course and which stages are going to suit him well. So we'll start. We're, I'm going to look at the real sprinter stages um, and see where he's got the best shot. So the first stage, as we talked about on the preview show, and again, if you haven't checked that out, give it a look. All of it's still relevant, except for the part of Dakota Quick Step where we talk about Cavendish not going um, and the and the odds for Sam Bennett for the green jersey. But the first two stages, they have a couple small categorized climbs, but they're going to be too hard for, for the sprinters and certainly too hard for Cav. So the first even potential 
shot for Cavendish is going to be here on stage three. Mumps and bumps, two cat fours, and then a descent into the finish. I actually don't want to spend too much time on this because I don't think he's necessarily going to have a good shot. You've got a real technical turn here. Coming over the river, you've got a 180-degree turn. you got to be in position there, and then another – or 290 degrees, and then um, basically a, a pincher here into the final shot. Just seeing the challenges that you may that he may experience – coming over these bumps. Um, I think this one's just going to be a little bit too hard for Cav. Um, and so I don't think that stage three is going to be his, his best shot. Now move on stage four. Now we're talking. I mean, this thing is 150 kilometers pancake flat, nothing categorized. And when you look at the map, you've got a lot to like here. You've essentially got a completely non-technical finale. You get past the sprint point. You got a lot of time to get up into position, and then you got to straight on into the finish. A little couple kilometers to go. So stage four looking like one of the best shots for Mark Cavendish to get that thirty-first. Now continue on because we got a couple really good sprinter stages. Moving on to stage six here, we got one hundred fifty-eight, one hundred sixty kilometers. You've only got one cat four very early on very small mumps and bumps along the way. And then the finale is uh, a non-technical one. You get into town and you've got this one, you've got a left-hander and a right-hander into the finish. Um, it's going to be fast, but you can expect that DeCoinic will be really well-placed given that long straight lead out to get there. Cavendish can easily be in the first 10 wheels, probably with two guys in front of him. He's going to have He's still going to have Ballerini there, and then Morku can deliver him right to the line with 200 to go, and then it's just going to be up to him to finish the job. And he's going to have to hope that folks like Caleb Ewan are caught out of position with a poor train, but um, he's definitely got a shot. So four and six looking like great options. Uh, then it's not going to be – we're going to get a couple hills in, You got the, t uh, and we'll come back after the rest day. And this is stage 10. This is right after the rest day to Valence. You got 190 kilometers. You've got a couple mumps and bumps in the first half, but should be all right. Kind of a long flat descent and then a false flat slight incline to the finish here on stage 10. But again, uh, non-technical, the team can get them in great position. You've just got this right hander before you head into town and then largely a straightaway. This is not really a hairpin turn. Want to be well positioned into the finish, um, but definitely one with potential for Cavendish on 10. So you got four, six and 10 all looking pretty good. Continuing on, uh, you get another shot on 12. 11 is a very trying stage. I believe that's the Von 2 stage. Um, you're going to be well positioned here. This is effectively the same parkour as we looked the day before. Effectively the same parkour. And when we look at the map, see how it rides into the finish here on 12. Oop. Zooming in a little too much there. Um Long, long, straight, non-technical, and let's see what happens when we get to the finale. If it ever wants to come. Couple turns. The cat three. I think I'm going the wrong way on the map. And we are just going to say, oh, there we go. No, we've got into town. You've got a hard left. Hard right and a hard left and a final straight. So flat enough, Dakota can deliver him. It's going to be interesting to see what's his, you know, coming out with like a couple hundred meters to go, um, how his explosiveness will land versus some of the other guys. But he should be well positioned. I consider stage 12 the fourth time that that Cavendish should have a decent shot. Um, next day, stage 13, another good shot. We'll start by looking at the finale here. Coming to town, you've got a hard right turn and then two long left turns. Um, but only with a couple hundred meters to go. Overall, that stage profile, again, looks really attractive for a guy like Mark Cavendish. Just got to get over the bumps early, plenty of time to recover. Just have to watch out for any you know, sneaky attacks here, but they're still going to have about 20 kilometers of effectively flat and slightly downhill. Going to be tough for anybody to get away. They're going to have control of the peloton, and they should be in, in good shape. So that's stage 13, and really his fifth shot uh, at a stage. Uh, don't know why stage 14 popped up here. Definitely not a day for Cavendish um, unless he's feeling otherworldly, which he won't. Um, and then after that, after stage 13, he's got to suck it up. He's going to have to hold on to 
some of the nastiest climbs that we've seen in the Tour de France. Uh, stage 17 and 18 are going to be awfully trying, but there will be a reward at the end when he gets to stage 19, uh, which we see here. He's got a massively long lead in, non-technical, brute force, all raw speed. Uh, you've got this one little corner, uh, but you've got several kilometers to go after that. This whole thing is just flat. I mean, you got a little bump at the very beginning, but nothing categorized after that. And then literally the last eight kilometers, pancake flat into the Bourne. So that's on stage 19, Mark Cavendish's sixth opportunity to take a win. And then stage 20 time trial, and then what it's all about. The Champs-Élysées. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if Mark Cavendish wins on the Champs-Élysées here in 2021 in his absolutely miraculous year? He'll have a shot. He'll have a shot. If, if he gets over the mountains in 17 and 18, you better believe that Mark Cavendish is going to be in the hunt and his team will place him well. We always know this comes to a bunch sprint. It's all about positioning. The guy's done it a zillion times. He knows where to be. He's got Ballerini. He's got Morku going to deliver exactly the line. And look, Morku did it last year. The last time Mark Morku was on the Champs Elysees, he delivered Sam Bennett to victory in green in 2020. Why not make it a double in 2021? So, look, this is the best thing that's happened to cycling in a minute. You got to be delighted for the guy. You got seven attempts, Cav. You got seven shots at, at your 31st stage win. Go on and get it. So, rooting for Cav. And let's see what he does. We're going to stay tuned on this one. And let me know what you think. You think he's going to take a win? Think he's going to take a stage win? Look, I bet against him all season. I'm done doing it. I want to see it so bad. Let's go, Cav. Get that win. I'm banking on it. Go get it, man. And uh, we'll be here to break it down. So thanks for listening. The tour break.